abandon hope all ye who enter here that is the caption for that image now we're going to talk about that more in this video in just a moment it came from the official isle discord server from the game's creator dondi now what does it mean not exactly sure but i think there are some hints and some blatant and obvious hints that tell us kind of what's going on in that cave anyways guys welcome back to the isle i have some footage for the new dinosaur nesting system I've got their animations, and I've also got some cool conceptual and official stuff that was done in-game to show you. We have corpse rotting, we have blinding dinosaurs through various means, not just death. We have the egg system, and obviously, as I mentioned previously, the new animations. We're about to move into a ton of information that was dropped by the devs and stuff that was teased, and it's so, it's so funny because before in the last video i was like where are our updates and then they released the huge packet of information that was amazing and like there's quote unquote strain trees or something like that like we're gonna get killed by hypo trees or some crap <laughs> okay anyways enough talk about the hypo trees let's get into the clips that i have for you now on the nesting animations and here we are the nesting animations, and finally we see more than the Uteraptor and I believe Galley. So this is the Giganotosaurus and its nesting animation. I don't entirely like this animation to be honest with you. It looks kind of different and strange, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just feel like it should use its feet. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Either way, the Allosaurus is looking really good with its nesting animation. I'm loving that it's using its claws so much. I do feel like these things should have used their feet a little bit more, but, well, I guess you can't have everything you want in life. They still look good. Actually, they still look really good. And I, I imagine when that whole dust particle cloud comes up, uh, that's where the nest is going to be like coming up from the ground or it's going to fade into reality and you'll see what's going on. And I actually caught the Rex nesting as well. I almost overlooked this because it was halfway through a uh, different clip but I got lucky and I found it now the Rex obviously doesn't use its arms because it have to lay down in order to do said nesting and then this is the Carnotaurus using its face because well it kind of has <laughs> problems with hands and stuff I did notice in the beginning it used its foot as well to claw out the ground a little bit and loosen the dirt that's kind of cool I like that and I also have some, I guess, work on the tribal. And I just want to make sure you guys know, the Giganotosaurus, I'm not saying it's a bad animation. It's a good animation. Whoever made it is obviously talented. Uh, it's just like, I'm not big on the whole, you know, just arms alone with such a big dinosaur like that. It's it's almost like it's awkwardly crouching down, trying to, you know, it, it should have used its, its claw. But anyways, this is the tribal, all the stuff that was happening with it. And now we're moving into the cave because there's not much to say about the tribal. Now, caves, on the other hand, I'm wondering if this is the cave that is entered through that other passageway. Now, odds are it's not going to be the case, but I can hope for the best and say, hey, maybe this is going to be the cave we enter. Now, what the hell would live in a cave like this with all these walls that can scale and stuff? Well, what do you think can scale walls, and what do we know will be able to scale walls? the old version of the cannibal. This guy was supposed to be able to jump on walls, leap from them, leap from trees, climb cave walls, and all kinds of nastiness. Now, why am I talking about that so much? Because if you look at the image that was provided by the developers of that fancy cave entrance, you yourself will notice there's some engravings on the sides of the pillars of that gateway. If we zoom in, on the sides of those gateway pillars, we will see what seems and resembles to be the old cannibal, which is no longer the cannibal, as, as we know, survival, whatever you want to call it. Oh boy, so I only assume and I can only imagine that there is something happening on the island where we enter this place and, well, there is really nasty stuff inside in the way of the new quote-unquote creature that we 
we don't really know what it was since we were misled the entire time intentionally mind you which is a very smart marketing strategy i, I well i guess not marketing but a very smart hype strategy if, if that makes sense you can't really see too far into the concept art other than we know this gate is absolutely ginormous because well we see a human to scale of the gate now I don't really understand why there is such a big gateway if these cannibal creatures or whatever they are now are about the size of a human. Why would they need such a hugely constructed gate? What is the meaning behind that? See there's so many questions about it unless it's just for the presentation of hey, bad things inside, maybe it's just for the engravings. And then who would have made this stuff? That's the question. <laughs> There's so many questions. My idea would be that they were locked inside this place and maybe there's a door in there somewhere that we just can't see and it's closed obviously in the darkness or the door is open and there's just bad things all around that are going to come out of there eventually with a upcoming update. I'm not really sure. You guys let me know down below in the comment section what you really think is going on here. I think this is the most important image next to the tribal cave paintings that I'm going to show you in a second. Now I think this plays more into the tribals than anything else because if you look at the cave paintings right here you will see that they seem to almost worship and warn about the creatures in the isle. Now what do I mean by this? Well, you can see obviously there is a man holding a spear and a very large raptor about to eat his face. And then you can see a clear representation of a hypo rex and what appears to be a hypo spino as well. And if you look down, you will see people are kind of bowing down to this hypo spino and like it's very difficult to tell, but they are people. They're very rough, rudimentary people just to get the concept behind. If you overlook it, it looked more like just the spino jumped or some crap and like it's just like a shockwave brawn effect. But to me, those look like people bowing down in worship. So they are worshiping what appears to be a hypo spino. And the weird thing is this hypo spino doesn't really have the same characteristics of a normal spino. This one seems to have some kind of bone tusk on its snout and some kind of bone armor sticking out through its sides, but it looks more ceremonial than combat based. So it gets really messy really fast. To the left of the spino, there's some kind of weird turkey chicken thing whatever it's supposed to be i'm not really sure unless it's their representation of what they would believe to be a god or something you move up you see the nada bronto obviously nothing too fancy they're just signifying there is something there unless they worship all dinosaurs or at least the ones that won't hurt them you move up again we see what it, it's either going to be the quets or something else that's going to be flying through the sky and well, we see the rocks actually. Now the funny thing is, these jagged rock formations are the same we see on Isla Nicta on the Denya server. At the end of the ocean basically, you see all these things. So maybe that's where we would find some flying creatures. Maybe we would already find flying creatures there if we were to pay attention. Because it's an area we don't really look at. When you move up even more, we can see the Titan of Boa and a human who appears to be getting sacrificed by it. And you can tell because the human is there, obviously, and then these other ones are worshipping the Titan of Boa having a fancy meal. So, all in all right now, I think we can digest that the tribals, to some degree, or some kind of humanoid species on this island, are worshipping certain dinosaurs, maybe the hypo strains and stuff. They're trying to appease them as gods and, I guess not get their asses handed to them in one swift bite because that's that's a thing and then obviously the hostile dinosaurs are the ones that they can't really handle or won't i guess quote unquote heed to the prayers uh are just enemies and they will fight to uh, kill them and that's why i bring up the cannibal stuff again because the cannibals obviously well they had engravings maybe the tribals locked the cannibal monsters away inside the dark caves 
Uh, now, why are the cannibals in the dark caves? We're not even, that's for another video. You look to the right, we have a flag inside what seems to be some kind of dial or something like that. I'm not really sure. We have a generic human and triceratops skull. Then we have the Carnotaurus, obviously, and then the Stegosaurus as well, just drawn there, whatever. Now, these are conceptual and they're not done yet, so I imagine there are more details missing that we need to see to digest these completely, like a fine meal. But I think we just, we got a lot of information on the lore so far of the game, at least for the tribal side. Let's move into some other stuff like corpse degrading and that fancy stuff, basically. So the next three images you're going to see are to do with death and, I guess, dinosaurs just rotting over time. So you can distinguish how much food is left on a body before they turn to gore. So this obviously is one of the first stages. It's not too badly damaged or anything. I feel like this should be reiterated on a little bit more. And I think this is just like when it's rotting on the ground and it's going to turn into a gore pile more so than a dinosaur actually eating it. But regardless, you can see the skin is starting to peel away. It's starting to get eaten by bacteria and stuff. And then you move into another stage where we can actually see some serious body degradation. We actually see the eyes turned white and there's not really anything left that would resemble living tissue, for instance. Uh, it's pretty safe to say a lot of this has died and it may actually classify as rotting flesh and other creatures with the uh, iron belly trait might be able to eat it only. Then we move into the shant. Now, Don actually said this is the eye effect for the shant, obviously. If it's dead, you know what happens to your eyes when you die. You lose all the color and stuff because there's no blood flow, basically, and everything kind of just looks bad. But it's also a look for if it gets blinded by other means. What other means? Well, if the Dilo was able to spit some kind of nasty chemical into your eye, or I don't know, maybe you just hurt your eye, you go blind a little bit, well... You know, I'm going to let your imagination take hold of that and, and decide what you want to do from there. Now we are going to move in to the strain trees because monster vegetation now in variation. So this is the first image of a, I guess, quote unquote, strain tree. And I'm not really sure what the idea is behind this. Uh, it just looks like a giant tree. Now, the scale of this is in the bottom left. I think this is a hypospino in the bottom left, and then you can see the strain tree itself. We do know, we have confirmed information from the developers that trees will sometimes be able to kill you, they will be hostile to you, maybe absorb you and stuff like that. Just all around nastiness, but this isn't even the worst of it. The worst one is down right here, actually, and this is crazy as I, I'm not even going to get demonetized this time, but you get the idea. Again, a spino and or hypospino appears to be a hypospino underneath some kind of more alien looking blooming tree that's canopied an entire gigantic area. Now, this reminds me of like a world tree or something like that from various different video games, but obviously it's not a world tree. I'm wondering... If the vegetation actually plays a larger role in the strain creation or well if they themselves have been infected by strains because we know a hypo strain, strain strain will make things vastly larger more armored and more menacing all around what does this tree have and what kind of pesticide do i need to use to avoid this happening to the tree out back so all in all, it's been pretty interesting information so far. I I feel like we have a lot of questions to answer and we unfortunately don't have enough information collected to get the answers. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the new nesting UI. This is what I guess you would call the incubation chamber or the nest where you are going to nest things in. And we can see various stages of incubation you see far left incubating and then incubating and then you see gestating in the top of it and then to the left you see ready and it seems to be a full fledged this baby dinosaur ready to burst out of its shell and all of that stuff now we see in the right to the species how much health it has the points the eggs the food the owner id you know yada yada you can destroy it give food and go back and this obviously ties into the animations i had just previously shown you and then there is some kind of 
human-like scan, I guess. Like, I get a human-like scan vibe from this. Like, humans are doing testing and, and checking the health of the fetus inside of the egg. I actually asked Don about this, and I was like, you know, is it intentional for it to have more of a human feel? And uh, he didn't really have much to say about it, so we're not going to talk about that anymore. All in all, these reveals are really big for the lore of the game and us getting more of an understanding on the shape of where this game is going, at least with its story. I really value the story of a game because it adds so much more, I guess, emotion and impact into what you're doing. And all in all, I feel like a good story is necessary for a good game in most instances. It's, it's not every single time because sometimes the gameplay is just amazing. But I think in this case, a story to go along with the updates really helps. Think of Fortnite and the events they're doing right now, trying to tell the story of their game, the story of it, obviously, with the events that are happening in game and what's what's going on. That's that's all unraveling. That's just with random events. That's actually telling a story in real time events and exciting events in game. But I would really love to see something like that in the aisle. Anyways, that's basically everything I have for you right now on the update stuff. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on everything as a whole. So here is my input on all of this. And as you probably have already figured out, I've seen this stuff weeks in advance because well, I get to see cool teaser stuff and I wish I could blab to you guys about it all the time, but I can't unfortunately. However, what I'm going to say now is more speculation than anything. We went through a really long period in the aisle where we didn't really see anything. Don didn't really tease anything too, too cool on his streams. Nothing really cool was shown. And we kind of just had radio silence while they worked on things. And then suddenly, all of this conceptual stuff and the nesting stuff was shown. Now... My take on this is I think this is a diversion. Why do I think it is a diversion? Well, it was just so much stuff so fast and it seems to be a lot of early iteration stuff. Doesn't look like it's finalized poly stuff. I think they're working on something massive in the background or something big happened and they just haven't shown us anything yet. I think that's what's going on. I, Don, I think you're pulling the old switcheroo. I think you're giving the community some cool fancy stuff to take their mind off of the other potential cool fancy stuff as a, as a surprise. Now, I could be wrong. I've been wrong in the past, but I've also been right. However, I think right here with the way this was all shown to us so fast in such a short span of time, along with the information provided, I think there is something bigger than what we're seeing right now. Forget the tribal paintings, forget the ideas of the lore and the corpse rotting. Forget the baby nesting system, maybe not that, that's actually kind of big, but you get the idea. Forget some of the other stuff that was shown to us, because I think, I think there is something bigger behind the curtain to be revealed. Now, I can't confirm it. I wish I could. I wish I knew if there was. Hey, Don, if there's something bigger that you guys are planning on revealing, yeah, I would I would love to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, anyways, you guys get the idea. I think it's just a diversionary tactic to take our minds off of what might actually be coming in the near future. Now, and that, with that said, the whole gate thing, too, I think it may be something to do with cannibals and tribals because we do know they've been working on tribals for a while now and trying to finalize their stuff, along with the, I believe, IK system, where we eek, e, along where uh, we basically angle as we move and stuff. You get out of here. You don't need to touch me. I'm just a baby Serato. You don't even need to look at me. Again, if you have babies, I kind of understand it. You guys let me know what you think down below in the comment section. I know this wasn't the normal aisle video I usually do. This was a lot more information, a lot less gameplay, and so on and so forth. You get the idea by now. Uh, and it's just because we had so much stuff revealed so fast, I wanted to show you guys. And I, I was going to do this video a while ago, but I decided to hold off and wait because I wanted more information. I didn't want to just spew out little bits of information here and there. I wanted to actually dedicate an entire video to giving you guys this information and my thoughts on it. Now... I just want to make sure I'm clear on this one last time, okay? 
the Giga animation that I kind of talked down on. Again, for the third time, because people love to take what I say and misconstrued it in the worst way po- Oh, listen to this. You guys hear that? The bushes rustling and stuff? The jimmies? That's actually something that was added a while ago. I didn't even know. Apparently walking through these things, at least plants you can eat, uh, makes them make noise. So I think there's something else going to be happening in the near future with that too, but I want to make sure I'm, I'm crystal clear. Uh, with what I said about the Giga's animations and me not liking it. It's not that I don't like how it looks. It looks great. I like it so far. I think it could be improved on. But overall, I do think it's a nice animation to have. I just don't agree with it using its claws and stuff. I think it should be using its feet more and its snout. And then maybe the claws would be like the finishing touches, you know. Maybe not have it awkwardly, you know, crouch down and like hurt its back trying to do this. And like it's trying to look down with its its long face. And it's just kind of not... It I don't know. It doesn't feel authentic and realistic it kind of feels more like i wanted to make a different animation and that's what i did which it's still good i don't know who makes the animations you do great you do great work i love what you do but not just not, not in this instance for you know you, that that uh, <laughs> you're one of my favorite devs if <laughs> it matters all right you guys give me your thoughts down below in the comment section i guarantee you dondi will be seeing this video and he will have things to say most likely um about the update stuff as well in the near future and i think it's a diversion so that's basically what you should take home from that guys that is it for now leave a like if you did enjoy this video let me know your thoughts down below. Critique it if I can make this video better. I've been trying to listen to you guys recently with the effects and the overlays and stuff. I'm just getting into this stuff again and actually using Premiere Pro's advanced options to edit videos together. So I, I, I'm not perfect, basically. Hopefully you saw it a little bit easier, though. All right, that's it. Goodbye.